Hello, it's Jennifer, and welcome to a video where I show some new Hero Arts products and also how to do a crackled die cut. So here's the card that we're going to be doing in this video. You can see that great fern die cut in the middle there. That is from Hero Arts. It's one of their newest releases along with the stamps that I used. But first we're going to start with this die cut and show you how I get that nice crackled shine on the, on the surface of it. So this is the die from Hero Arts. It's a new fern die. I just love it, how detailed it is. And I'm going to run it through my die cut machine um, with some Tim Holtz Distress watercolor paper. I'm using watercolor paper because I'm going to add a ton of water to this in a bit and I want it to be able to hold it. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the die cut in its negative space here. This just makes it easier when I go to ink it. You can take it out if you want to. I'm going to apply a ton of Distress ink over this die cut. So basically, I am not spending any amount of time blending this color. I just want to put the color on very heavy. You can see it's uneven and splotchy, but that doesn't matter. I'll take care of that in a moment. This is the mowed lawn green that I'm laying down first. It's just a good, basic, happy green color. I'm then going to go in with some peeled paint distress ink. This is a little bit of a deeper color. And just add little spots of this color over the fern in different places. Next, I'm going to take a more of a bluish color here, the evergreen color, and do little spots of this bluish on the tips of some of the fern leaves. This is just to add a touch of blue to it, just to get a little color variation. And next, I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of warmth here and there using spiced marmalade. Now, this bright orange actually won't show up a whole lot in the finished product, but it just adds a little bit of warmth to little or little highlights onto, these, onto this fern die cut when we're done. Now, you'll see this is messy and uneven. It doesn't matter. Trust me, it'll end up looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the die cut out. I kept the die cut in the negative space to kind of give it some stability while I inked it up. Now I'm just spraying water over this, and I'm going to spray so much water over this that it pulls up completely on the ferns. Now you'll see the smaller areas, these smaller fern petals, some of the color kind of pulls off of it a little bit. I'm just going and adding a little back in with a uh, paintbrush. Now I'm just going to pick this up and heat it with my heat gun, and I'm using the air from my heat gun to kind of push some of the color around and make sure that it fills the leaf in a little bit. You could just walk away and let this dry on its own. It actually would give more beautiful watercolor results, but I just didn't feel like waiting, so I just heat it with a heat gun. Now I decided I wanted this to be even darker, so I'm going to go on and put another quick layer, just adding lots of mowed lawn towards the center of the ferns, and then I wanted a little more blue in it, so I'm going back and adding a little bit of that evergreen color just on some of the tips. Again, you'll see that it's uneven and not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and spray the daylights out of this again with just plain old water. You'll see all of that kind of puddle up on each of the ferns. You can either let this air dry or heat set it again. And then you end up with the great watercolor look on the final results of the die cut. You can see that I used watercolor paper here because it holds up with all this water much better than regular cardstock. So now it's time to add that shiny crackled look to this die cut. So I'm using this product that I've been loving lately. It's from Viva, I think it's called Croco, but I'm using the, the transparent or clear crackle. Now this is great to rub over stencils, but I wanted to show you don't need to use a stencil for this. I'm just using my tool to spread a very uneven layer over the die cut. You, If you want this to be even, you could paint it on, you could do whatever you want, but I want this to be uneven because wherever you put it on thick, you'll have bigger cracks, and wherever you put it on thin, you'll have smaller cracks. So you can get a variation this way. So just see me spread this around. Um, I'm doing this on my craft sheet so that I can keep the extra, um, the extra paste that I don't use and scrape it back and put it in the bottle, which I'll show you in a moment. Once I get a covered, some coverage here where it's nice and uneven, I'm just going to take this aside and let it dry for a while. I actually let this dry overnight. You can let it dry less time if you need to, but it does take quite a bit of time to dry. To dry. After it's started to dry and is at least dry on the surface, you could put a book over it to let it dry the rest of the time so that it doesn't curl up as much, or you could glue this onto a surface so that it stays nice and flat as it dries. So I'm just going to go ahead and scrape back the excess that I didn't use. You'll see it tinted it a little bit green, but when I mix this up, it will never show up on my next project. It's a great way to conserve it, and then I'll just use a baby wipe to wipe my craft sheet out, but you could always just do this on scrap paper. So now as this dries, you'll see this great crackle that you get on the surface there. It's really subtle, but I like that it has shine too, so that it really just kind of takes your die cuts and gives it a completely different look. It's not like this delicate looking die cut anymore. It has some substance to it. 
So now it's time to make the little window piece to hold this little die cut on the front of the card. So this is a new stamp from Hero Arts, a five line stamp, making it up with some Tide Pool ink. And then I just had some old kind of bluish green dark colored cardstock that I'm going to stamp onto. Now you'll see that I took a lot of care to line that up and I didn't really line it up all that well. That's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and ink it up and trim the bottom and top off just to make it look like I lined it up. By the way, that little circle there, I just die cut that with a circle die. You could use a punch if you have that or a circle cutter. So now I'm going to go ahead and trim off the top and the bottom of this piece. Um, I oftentimes will kind of not do a good job with my background stamping, but if you trim the sides off and kind of re-square it, you'll have no problem. So there we go. We have our background piece here. And that uh, Hero Art Shadow Ink, that Tide Pool Ink, will soften, and you can see it's starting to get more even in the background for great tone-on-tone -tone look. So I just brushed, brushed that with my powder tool to, rem to remove any static that might be on the surface. And I have this new Happy Birthday stamp message from Hero Arts. I love this, this message here. It's a nice, good font that's classic. I'm going to stamp it with Versamark ink on there, add some Hero Arts white embossing powder, and then I'll zap that with a heat gun. I love, love, love the look of a white embossed image on a stamped background like this, on a dark background like this. And then you can just brush away the excess powder. So I'm going to go ahead and I just put some foam dots behind all of that stamped piece in the background and pop dotted it onto a card. And I'm going to take my die cut and tuck it behind the window so it looks like it's coming out from it. To adhere it here, I'm just putting little lines or dots of glossy accents along the back of the fern, just in lots of different places. I'm not sure which parts of these will touch my card, so I put a lot down. So I covered almost all of the little petals on this fern. I'm going to take it and stick it into my die cut there, covering up my nail polish that left a little mark on the card in there. And there we have it. We have the fern placed in where I want it, but I want to make sure that it's touching and adhering, so I'm going to just take my glass of water, put it on there, and leave it there for a few minutes so that it dries nice and tight. So there you have a fun way to kind of give your die cuts a different look. By the way, I think this card would be a good one for many different occasions, so you could change that greeting up to be anything you need. I'm also going to be using some more of the New Hero Arts products throughout the week, so be sure to check back. If you're interested, interested in any of the products that I use in this video, they're all linked below in the YouTube description. Also, you can visit my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com for more information. If you found this video helpful, I'd love it if you went to YouTube and gave me a thumbs up, and we'll see you again in the next video.